watched Can You Ever Forgive Me and I thoroughly enjoyed your performance. Oh. Uh, what, uh, you know, it, when I heard that you were doing a dramatic role, I was like, oh, I wonder what that's gonna be like. Uh, because I think oftentimes we fall, uh, we, we're very territorial of our comedic actors, especially, <laughs> you know, and um, rigid with, with them almost. Um, so to watch you do that role and for it to be actually very seamless, you know, I, oh, and you. what it occurred, what occurred to me is that with all your roles that, that I've witnessed, uh, you take your character seriously and um, seem to really uh, take their circumstances to heart and your roles seem to come from a very heart, um, honest place, I would say. Um, so I just wonder for you, I'm sure you've been getting this a lot, what uh, the, the difference is, if at all, in doing dramatic and comedic roles. I think there's no difference to me at all. It's like I did all the plays, you know, I spent years in New York doing plays and they were all very dramatic, like the darker, the better. It never occurred to me to do anything comedic in a play. It's like never what I was, I was also always trying to do characters that were like, you know, 80. Like I did Trip to, I kept trying to do Trip to Bountiful, but I wanted to play the like 90 year old woman and yeah. I was 20. Yeah. Someone's like, that's just weird. <laughs> And I'm like, but I feel her, like, they were like, no, you're yeah. not doing that. You have an old soul. I have a super old lady soul in me. <laughs> but there's no, uh, there's no difference. I feel like the, in preparing for it and, and even how I kind of fall in love with them, there, there's no change. Mm -hmm. And I think even when it is like a, a comedy, I still always, like, I spend a lot of time, which maybe this is weird, like thinking about, like even if they're super happy and bubbly, I always think, oh, it's a defense mechanism. Like I think all these outer things, even if it's super pleasant or funny, I still think it's kind of, uh, I guess I have a bit of a fascination with defense mechanisms and like what people do to kind of how they present themselves. And right. even with comedies, I always kind of think about what breaks their heart and what are they hiding? And right. cause I think we all do that. I think it's the, yeah. I think we all do it. Yeah, we are all the thing in its opposite. Uh, yeah, yeah strongly for sure that as well. Yeah, I mean, do you? I mean, yeah, like, do you? Do you see in like each character? Do you think you prepare the same way? That's a really good do question. You have like a way to do it, or is it kind of driven by the character itself? I mean, in my mind, I, I, what I always am looking for. I'm always trying to be more orderly than I am. I was raised by a Capricorn. <laughs> and my mom is Capricorn and she believes in like order and organizing and planning ahead and all that. And, and so... Um, Do you have any of that? I mean, I have it because of her. She's like the, the thing on my shoulder. Right. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm more drawn to chaos, but I think it's like, uh, it's this negotiation between right. the person my mom wants me to be and the person that I am, you know? Um, and so I think that's the tension that I find in myself. So I, 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 I set off to do things in an orderly manner, but I don't think there's any real order in creating a life, you know? So yeah. it, I, it never goes according to plan. I mean, I make lists, you know, I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna do this. And I never follow that list because at the end of the day, I think what keeps me going is like just a curiosity and sometimes, and curiosity doesn't have a plan really. No, um, I think chaos is better for, for creativity. Right. Not right. easier, but probably better. Yeah, you're always like trying to seek order. Um, you know, as you go along, but it's never orderly. Um, do, we, do you agree? <laughs> it's never orderly. And it's like, I can say all the things I want to do and even preparing, but I've never once done it according to any kind of plan. It's mm -hmm. always like a word or a phrase or something about that person that I kind of start to obsess over. Yeah. And it kind of floods out in a different way. Yeah. I think at the end, I always feel like I've done about all the same-ish things, but I kind yeah. of never know I did it until it's done. I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess it all happened. I guess we're finished shooting. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm hopefully not gonna, they have yeah, it in the camp. Hopefully they have it. Do you know what that was for Lee Israel? The thing that was a kernel that opened it up for you? I think, I think I was really drawn to her. I kept thinking of her as an armadillo, and then I also <laughs> thought like. 
I've played a lot of kind of aggressive women that really are like for, like forward moving. Like I go forward first, I say something before you say something, I push first. In Lee, I just always got the feeling, which is very opposite from me. Mm -hmm. So I was fascinated with it that I always kind of felt like she was just like laying in wait. And if she was still enough, like an animal, like maybe they'd go away. Cause she would just, in my head, she had such little patience for people. Yeah. That she certainly could bite verbally. She was so witty and caustic. Mm -hmm. But I felt a lot of times like it's with her headset and just kind of always, always kind of driving people away. And I thought, for me, that's still, I'm a more, I'm kind of a spazzy, energetic person. So mm -hmm. just playing that different weight of like, I'm not moving or showing you that I'm alive. It's kind of like when an animal plays dead. I always thought Lee was just like, <laughs> if I stare away from them and keep my headphones on, that person who keeps trying to talk to me will probably go away. <laughs> so it was, a, it was such a nice, different yeah. energy to play. Yeah. What's your relationship with our armadillos? I don't know. I guess that they like curl up in a ball yeah. and like, I'm so kind of like, ah, like I'm, I don't have a lot of great, probably protective shields. Uh. And I just thought it was so interesting that she's yeah. so kind of yeah. guarded. I find I love myself so in yeah. a rather criminal position. I can't fathom what criminal activity could possibly involve it, except a crime of fashion, of course. I mean, embellishing uh, documents, if you will. Now, I want to ask you, when, when you start something like Black Panther, mm -hmm. did you, first of all, did you have an immediate reaction to what that was going to mean for the world and what it would mean for everyone seeing it, that it was a first of a first of a first? And then, I guess, secondly, I want to know, like, how insane do you find that, that it's a first in so many ways? Hmm. Yeah, right? Right. Well, I recall getting the phone call from Ryan. Uh, this was about, I want to say, mm, a good eight months before we started shooting, before it became an actual, no, it must have been even longer than that, a year, perhaps. And, um, you know, he walked me through his idea, his pitch <laughs> for right? the story. And... Uh, you know, it was it seemed very politically acute. For sure. And I was just, the, I said to him, like, are you making a marvel? Like, are you, have they greenlit this? <laughs> or are you just talking? Yeah. You know, and he was like, no, they have green, greenlit this. And I had never seen this kind of movie, you know, especially in the genre, the, this fantastical genre. Um, that was dealing with so much that was so uh, rich and, and 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 dangerous, you yeah. know. That's actually talking about some real issues and doing so with um, within the, the the world of 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 um, these fantastical heroes, you know. Having it be that relevant and current, yes, and still a fantasy, I thought was such a smart and f fascinating way to do that. Right, exactly, and it's exactly the place where such a thing should exist, right? And um, so it was the first sign, I, and I'd, I'd known Ryan for a little bit, I'd met him as we were both promoting 12 Years a Slave and Fruitvale Station, and I, I felt from him that he was a man of deep integrity and a man who works from gut, you know, real yeah. gut, and it was, this was a story he wanted to tell to really unpack his relationship with a continent uh, that he had never been to, a continent that he belonged to somehow, and um, historically, and uh, one that he had a very um, ambiguous and complex relationship with. Uh, and he was going to do that through this story. So the, how personal it was was, a, was the first sign that this was going to be different yeah. because there was a visceral nature to his attack of, of, of the, the, the world of the Black Panther. And then, you know, I hadn't seen a script and I didn't see a script until much later. I mean, we had six weeks of preparation before we started filming and that's when I saw the script. Really? really? Yes. So I signed on blindly. Wow. Uh, with the faith in 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 Ryan. Right. And so to read the script, I mean, I was like, okay, this is different. 
this were on the precipice of something very different. The political climate had changed, and he had had this idea in the Obama era, and suddenly this thing was resonating in such a new and and uh, just urgent way to the you strangely know, the maybe new... better when it came out. Yeah, it some it it did yeah. feel like it was. Maybe for tragic reasons, better it came out when it did that if it had come out four years, three years earlier. Yeah, yeah, because, uh, yeah, exactly. And they say uh, artists uh, really speak to the future, you know. Yeah. Uh, and that's what he was doing, yeah, you know. literally. <laughs> um, so I had a, a sense, of course, none of us could tell what it was going to do and what exactly, how people were going to take it and own it. Uh, we could not have uh, imagined or predicted the droves that would go to yeah. cinemas dressed Repeatedly, up to the nines, yeah. you know, in all their traditional garb around the world, you know, that it was going to cross generations. I went to Nigeria shortly after the film came out, and Ni Africans are not moviegoers. That's not where we, the, our main source of entertainment, but it had been three months since the film came out, and people were still going, and they were going with their grandmothers and their granddaughters, That's you know? It was incredible. What, now, what do you think, when, when it was first, before it became, you know, the, the unbelievable uh, success it, it became, what were the predictions? Were you getting the insane things where I have a bit of a fascination with, like, where, when people try to dictate or mm -hmm. predict of, like, this won't play well internationally. Yeah. This probably won't do that. And I always think... Well, that was I, I always fear. think you can't make any of those... I mean, statements? obviously that was the fear and we all felt it. No, not the fear, but the concern. It was the pressure that was on us and we all felt it as a cast, as a crew, uh, you know, producers. You know, this was, um, uh, you know, that it was predominantly a black cast uh, in, a, in a universe that has been quite Caucasian yes. for as long as, uh, you know, the Marvel Studios has existed. Uh, we, we, there was a concern, you know, of like, will this, will this, you hear it often said, oh, that, you know, films with, with black people don't sell. And it's been disproven Based many what? times. That's, that's my real question. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, when you hear that, are like, you can't have two women in a movie. Like, the world's going to dissolve, or you can't have an all black right, cast. It's right, right. Like, I mean, did you ever just, were you ever in the room where you're like, Based on what? Well, like, you're talking thing. crazy. Well, that, then, you never, I've never really heard it said to me straight. You know, so it's something that you hear in the ether and you hear it being said, they say, they say, who's saying? I know, I'm always you like, <laughs> I want to see the paper with the numbers on it. Exactly. And so, you know, so, but we, that's why I feel like all of us committed to this film very personally, yeah. you know, and it was not just the main cast, the extras who were going through a whole lot. There was a time when, in one of the scenes, we were tethered to the cliff, so that, and basically oh, it meant that we had to spend hours upon hours there, and people would bring us water and snacks and stuff, but we couldn't move. And, you know, in such circumstances, uh, you many people would leave the, and not come back if they didn't have to, and they came back, you know, they just kept coming back because it was like something they they, they, we'd never seen, the, had this opportunity. Took ownership you, of it. Yeah, total, total ownership. And, and, then and not that just reverberated the first time in the for, world. for such a predominantly black cast. Also, how women were portrayed in that movie was so incredibly strong and fierce. I brought, like, we all went, I think, within the first, my family, mm -hmm. uh, I think the second day it opened. Yeah. And I was so proud to have my girls, I have an 11 and 8 year old, to see to see that world, to, mm -hmm. to see the world in which I want to live in, and then also for them to watch the women portrayed in that movie. I just thought that doesn't have, like on two fronts, that just kind of broke every, every bad meeting where people say you can't really do this. I was right. like, it just crushed, Black Panther just crushed oh, my it on every level. You. Right. We cannot turn over our nation to a man who showed up here only hours ago. He is of royal blood. He killed T'Challa. In ritual combat. Does that really matter? And again, you know, uh, because Ryan is a feminist himself, and that was one of the first things he said, you know, he wants, he wanted this film to, uh, to uh, show the women, women like the women he grew up with. 
and the women he grew up with were are strong and yeah. multi-talented and multifaceted and and involved and so he was keen to have that happen and then he too he's what i love about him is that he's humble enough to 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 seek the counsel and help of those around him and to hire artists and stuff whom he can trust yeah. to bring more to the table than he might have even imagined. Which and to so, be collaborative like that. Right. Is, oh, I think you owe, don't you think you always get a better product mm -hmm. and a better experience and, and you feel it when you watch it. Yeah. That like, this is not just one person's idea of what is, you get this whole world of like, the I don't know the community right. to it. I feel like it comes through the screen. Yeah, and I think like you, you you've done uh, theater and stuff. I think that's more um, the norm in theatrical yeah. experiences uh, because everybody has to hold down their own um, live. Yeah, <laughs> you know? truly. And like you really have to rely on people. Uh, and in film, I think sometimes that can be missed. That you know the 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 fact that this is actually a joint effort. You yeah, know? it's a team for sure. We always say, you know, best idea wins. Everybody, like, you know, it, right. it doesn't matter where an idea comes from. I'm like, oh, I'll steal anyone's idea. Yeah. You know, like, we're, we're, I'm so, uh, I'm such a fan of, like, is this not working? Mm -hmm. Like, is it just me? What's mm -hmm. not working? And it's like, anybody can say, like, what about this? Mm -hmm. And I think when you start working like that, yeah, that's kind of, it's like, that's how I want sets and I guess the world. Right. I am loyal right. to the throne, no matter who sits upon it. What are you loyal to? I loved him. I loved my country too. I would love to know about your experience with, uh, can you ever forgive, forgive me, whether you had, whether your experience was collaborative and, you know, how you worked with the director on that. Uh, Mari Heller, who directed Can You Ever Forgive Me, was like every dreamy adjective that you could give someone. She was incredibly, um, she knew exactly what she wanted, visually, mm -hmm. tonally, we had talked about it quite extensively and I think it's always exciting when you talk to someone and you really know that you're seeing the same thing and like you're not you're not going to get there on set and then someone's like you're kind of wacky and like yeah. we really just even in how we were how we wanted to show New York City during the 90s mm. um, and how we wanted those bookstores to look and everything we'd really <clears> talked <throat> about it and she has such a a clear vision of what she wants, but what's so amazing is, is that she's completely collaborative. Mm -hmm. And if we want to try something, or even if you're just like, I'm not feeling that this is landing right, it's it's like, let's do what's right for this moment instead of like, she, did, she didn't need to be right. Mm -hmm. Which I think is usually the case when people are really good at what they do. Right. I don't right. think there's the fight for like, I have to be right, I have to prove I'm right. She's like, well, let's, let's figure out what feels good for everybody. So it was this kind of great feeling of leadership and guidance mm -hmm. with a really light touch and completely flexible to change at any moment. Mm -hmm. And then I think you can just like, I know it's, it's nice to, it's, it's such a gift to work like that because I feel like I can turn off my kind of, because I didn't produce that, I can turn off my producer brain and just right. be like, I don't have to do any of that. Right. The schedule's not my problem. Right. I'm just going to actually do the scene. And I really, really trusted her that she would come in. And she would come in with like one or two words. And it was always something that I, I loved the calibration of it. And I was like, oh, I do want to try that. Like, that's that's good. And I always think it's exciting when because it just makes you relax right. so much more. when you Don't you think when you really know, like, they're really watching. I'll push in the directions that I'm feeling, but right. I actually love when someone comes in and is like, what if you don't want them to know that you're upset? Or like, I love a little note yeah. that's like, yeah. it's not completely changing your performance. Mm -hmm. It's a little like thing for inside yeah. my brain. I always love those. I'm yeah, like, yeah, giving you that yeah. extra layer, that extra spice in it, yeah. But like, so you, you now, we work both as a producer an actor in your work as well as yeah. just as an actor um, like you did with this. Uh, what is your relationship with control? <laughs> oh, no. Um, <laughs> I like it. I'm a big fan of it. Uh, I think especially for what we do, 
I, I think you, I think I love every aspect of it so much. I want the sets to be right. I want this to be, I want to talk about where is that light? Where's this? And not in a, not in a maniacal, my way, the highway, but I really love it. Like mm -hmm. I will sit and talk about the rug that like the, you know, art director wants to get. And I'm, they're like, I've never had anyone truly as interested. I'm like, I just love it. I love every, I think it's maybe from building sets for plays that it's mm -hmm. like you, I've always been a part of all of it. So mm -hmm. it seems weird, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. And then I, th I and think- And do you do that also when you're uh, not a producer in a movie now? Yeah, and, and I do, like, but it, because it's fun though. Not right. because, yeah. not because I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. listen to me or else. It's It's just part of the fun. I think it's also how I get into the character because I'll already be familiar with sets and I know the weird thing I put in a drawer or like uh -huh. I pick that weird pillow and it's fun. But also I think if you don't have a certain amount of control over the work, you know, you, you could find yourself doing, I think what I always feared and, and I never got those parts, I'm, I'm not skilled enough, but it was all the parts that I used to read auditioning that I felt like I kept, go back through scripts and I'm like, I say, oh, like, oh, John. Oh, John. Oh, John. Oh, Carl. I was like, I don't know how to do that. Like, I, I need a part. I don't know how to just stand behind, like, my husband and go, mm -hmm. And I was always bummed of, like, why is she always a bummer? Why can't, if the guy's funny, why can't, isn't a funny guy usually have a funny wife? <laughs> or I, I mean, it's like, I rarely find like somebody. you and your husband. Yeah, well, let's <laughs> hope, but like, I just always thought they don't match up. I don't believe they're a couple. And right. it's like, I feel like I needed to take the control mm -hmm. because I wanted to finally put into the script what I kept asking for, which was like, mm. how about she has an opinion? Mm -hmm. As opposed mm -hmm. to she's just vacuuming and irritated with her husband. I'm like, what if she, li here's a crazy idea. What if she likes her husband? Yeah. <laughs> which people were just like, no. So it's like, I wanted the control because I wanted to put real women into movies. Yeah. Funny, dramatic, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I, I, don't you feel that unless you take that control, it is often presented to you of like, this is a real woman. Right. Yet it's no one, either one of us would recognize as a real human. <laughs> yes, that happens uh, quite, quite, surprisingly quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, when, you, when you're able to, when you have a say in the creation of the thing, then you can, you can nip that in the bud. And that's the attraction to producing, you know, because, and then you can also have a say in, in, in the partners that you bring to the Thank table, you. that share your, your vision, share your outlook and your mission. Um, so yeah, it's, it feels really good. I'm I'm in the early stages of doing that as well, um, and developing, adapting books for the screen, and it is very rewarding. I haven't yet been in the situation where I'm producing and acting yet. I haven't yet done that, um, and I'm curious to know what that's going to be because for me at the moment, uh, one of the things that I do uh, when I'm preparing for a role, obviously. I have jurisdiction of the character. Right. And yes, like with Black Panther, it matters, and I was very, very invested in the entire development of the script, and you know, Ryan ha really invited us to share our opinions about you know, what should happen and stuff like that. I enjoyed that process. But the moment I step, step on set, you know, uh, I kind of need to reclaim my sovereignty as just yeah. the character. And I wonder when uh, I'm a producer, what's that's, that's gonna be like when they're like, oh, we don't have enough uh, dry ice for the scene that's like <laughs> two weeks from now. First, first of all, the person that asked you that while you're in the middle of a really challenging scene should maybe not be there, but yeah. it does tend to split your brain. Yeah. But then it's hard to go back from that because then you start to see the matrix and you are like, yeah. Wait, we can't, that's never gonna get shot in time. Why don't we do it? Like, it does help, and I think you're, I think it will just split, and also certain things I think you'll just, and you'll know ahead of time, I think, going mm. in, because you will know it in such a, every inch of it in a different way. But do you, do you find when people present you with, oh, this seems like it's great for you, mm -hmm. do you think it's ever, is it like, that has nothing to do with, 
something that would interest me versus when you're going out and you're finding things that interest you and, and kind of drive you to do that part? Are they? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a really great relationship with my agent and she's got extremely good taste. That's great. So uh, I, I trust her so much. Um, it is alarming though when other people are pitching me, you know, <laughs> directly. Uh, they're often quite off. And I think it comes from, uh, I think when, when people approach you with an image of you from a specific movie or an image of you doing things like this, you know. Right. And I tend to... None of which are real. <laughs> yeah. In a way. And I tend to gravitate towards things that surprise even me, right? Um, so... Uh, Do you think for the challenge of it? Yeah, yeah. for the challenge of it. I like, to, I like to play roles that pique my interest but also frighten me. Like, yeah. how on earth am I going to do that? You know? Yeah, this could go terribly wrong. Ooh. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just have a taste for danger. I know. You know? And so, yeah, if, if, if I read a script and it's interesting and I love, I, and I want to see that story, um, and the character is interesting but not clear to me, then I'm more likely to do it, you know? Yeah. If there's a, both uh, a ooh and a yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> I know. It's a weird, it's a weird, like, I think it's a common strange itch that we all have to, it's like why we go for something that's like, oh, that seems super uncomfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I should probably pick that one. Has yeah. anybody said no to something you wanted to do? They're like, no, we don't think, does that, ha that can't happen anymore, right? I've definitely, there's been roles that I'm dying to play and I've heard no. You know, for sure, and it name breaks them. my name heart. Them. We'll all we'll all write to them, right? Like that seems crazy. Now, not now, now. yeah, not even now. now, really, even now, yeah, yeah. God, that's not a bright person, is it? <laughs> that's amazing. You get, yeah, but you get. I I've gotten. I've 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 heard someone say, "Yeah, we're looking for an unknown for this." Have you ever gotten that? Oh, I get no all the time. Sure. Yeah. What, yeah. are the, what are the reasons you're given? I'm well, curious. my favorite that was quite a while ago, I mean, this was years and years ago, I did get, I, we, we don't think she reads like a neighbor, which was oh. amazing. I was like, I can't wait to tell, to tell my neighbors that I couldn't read. It was like a one-line part in something. They're like, but we doesn't don't everybody have a neighbor? That's what I said. I was like, at least say something else. Say like, That's say weird. you just didn't like me, but please don't say I'm not a neighbor. Wow. That's like, that, I, but that was like my favorite. Wow. wow. But yeah, like not the right type. And also I think, being known more for comedies, I think a right. lot of times it like scares people, which I don't know when we started compartmentalizing people so much. I know, right, right. And, and, and even genres, I feel like, mm -hmm. I don't know, I feel like all my favorite stories go like up and down and then there's levity and then there's heartbreak and at the worst moment then you start laughing. Like I always love those stories. Right, right. And there's come, to, I don't know, I feel like in the last like, seven or eight years, it's like, if you put a more tricky, challenging moment in a comedy, people, I don't know if it's audiences or if it's our own business, it's like, that that shouldn't be in there, it's a comedy. As if you just have to be like, yeah. joke, 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 joke all the time. I'm like, how about it's still just a story? Right, 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 yeah. I, yeah, I, 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 we are, we are, we tend to want to box things and it's hard to break those boxes, you I know. know. Um, I don't do it. Do you, do you see things kind of in groupings or do you find it bizarre? Well, I, talking about producing, that's where I'm really seeing how people think, you know, when you're, like, when you're trying to cast something yeah. and, oh, you find a director for something and, you know, you have to create your short list of, of people and stuff like that. Um, and you know, you're doing an action film and so you're looking at action directors and I'm aware of it because I've been a victim of it so much, right. you know, cause I'm in the opposite spectrum where people don't trust me with, um, comedy, you know, I'm not known for comedic roles, right? I did do my first comedy uh, a year ago. It, it hasn't come out yet, but. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. And I was like, but you're naturally funny. Like <laughs> if people are meeting you, like, well, I'm also naturally reserved, so the thought that, you know, that I could let loose is not the first thing that people think right. about, you know, in, in my demeanor. That's more interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. It's... I want to see someone that's not known for it do it, because even if it's, 
whatever version of that is is, is going to be more. I think interesting to watch. Right, right. Yeah, and it terrifies me actually. Yeah. I mean, comedy is is not a joke. It's actually very no, difficult it's because it's so it's much really more hard. revealing, I think, right? And it's so subjective. Mm-hmm. That's it's true. like it's so That's incredibly true. subjective. I think you put a hundred people in a room, twenty will think it's hilarious, twenty won't get it, twenty hate it, four are offended when you're like uh, how how is a dry cleaner joke offensive? Like, people are offended by such strange things. Right, right. And then it's like you can't hit 100. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and no one can. So it's this right. maddening thing that I love so much, but I'm just like, I, you can never please everyone. Right. It's not even about, like, that seems real. Right. It's like, it has to be real, and then also you have to play this, like, numbers game of, what percentage is that joke landing with people? Ooh, does it? And yeah. Then you're just like, and the result is in laughter. Like, uh, un uh, unlike drama, where you know the impact of it can be is quite internal. Yeah. Uh, they want to hear. Yeah, you have to like prove it. Right. What? What is? What's the one coming out? That's a comedy. It's called Little Monsters, and it's uh, it's an Australian zombie romantic comedy. Oh, as you do, <laughs> as you do, as you do. <laughs> I'm going to scramble to get, somehow also do an Australian zombie romantic comedy yeah. and come out next year. I'll shoot it in my backyard. <laughs> ben and I do like terrible Aussie accents. Yeah. Just to be able to say it and be like, we both have the same movie. I mean, this is so I'm working weird. on a lot of fascinating projects. I just need my agent to call me back. I don't think the world is waiting for another Fanny Bryce biography, Lee. And we may disagree on what is considered fascinating. Would you ever direct? I'm not interested. No? No. Yeah. I'm not. I, I don't enjoy that level of control, quite honestly. Uh, uh, and I'm very subjective to one person's point of view. Really? I'm only yeah. just... <laughs> so to <laughs> allow myself to think and be concerned with everybody... Uh, yeah. Uh, I do enjoy um, directing documentary. That's something that I'm interested in. Oh. Yeah. And, and, so, and I, I definitely want, I've done it before and I, 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 I want to do it again. That's Do you I'm know what your in. topic would be? I don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, but the documentary I did previously was about people with albinism in Kenya and what it means to be, you know, white in a predominantly black society and just the, the complications of this condition that was really misunderstood. Um, so how that. long did you, sh how long, cause that's, I mean, you work so long to, to gather footage and just to prepare for a documentary. What was the, what was the prep and shooting of that? Well, I also did it when I was, I, I was in film school yeah. and it took me, I think it was about a six month process. Yeah. And it was the very first thing I'd done of that nature. It's a full length documentary. Yeah. I was like totally outside of my element and I think that's what I enjoy I like being in totally new terrain um, and figuring it out yeah I, you know I want to be an eternal beginner you yeah. know <laughs> that's good. yeah I like yeah. that yeah would you direct I have directed I like it quite a bit oh you have directed. I have I've directed like television and I've directed a short and I like it I would prefer to not be in it mm. I don't like the split um uh, yeah that Split focus. I don't like the split focus. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do, and it, there's some people that do it great. I always found, I was like, uh, I'm doing t maybe possibly two things at half percent. Or yeah. Like at 50%. I was yeah. like, yeah. I, I think it was always okay, but I was just was like, I, I really like just being there and watching and mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. working with the cameras and in the performances mm -hmm. or, or being on the side of it. But mm -hmm. I, I would, but I watch, it's funny, I watch my husband do it and Sometimes I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know about a feature. Yeah. It's like I, I keep thinking at some point I will. Yeah. But I have to really wait till I think a story really owns me. Yeah. And I just like can't let it go. Yeah, because it's, it's a long time. It. It's a long time. It's to a just long live with that time. one story. It's like yeah. we're, I'm done and like, bye, honey. <laughs> and he's yeah. still like, I begin the real work now in the editing room. And, right, right. You know, I kind of go traipsing on to like, who else do I want to play? He's yeah. like, I'm still cutting that one scene. I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> right, right, so, right. Yeah, I may not have the 
I'll see if my uh, the attention span for it, but right. it would be quite a challenge. I think I'm scared. Share of what it. we have. Yeah. We could provide aid and access to technology and refuge to those who need it. Other countries do it. We could do it better. Uh, not like these other countries, Nakia. How are you feeling about being a woman in this industry oh. right now? <laughs> You know, I'll take I'll take a centimeter uh, forward every so. I'll I'll take. I feel like there's forward motion mm -hmm. when people are like, "What a difference, huh?" I'm like, "Let's not let's not oversell it." Um, <laughs> but I do like seeing more women behind the cameras mm -hmm. and in front of it, and I like seeing more real women mm -hmm. being portrayed. Mm -hmm. I think we started going down a very slippery slope of. Every woman presented, it seemed like for so long, was so perfect and so quaffed and done. And I love that. I love a very over, I mean, if it fits, but when every character yeah. is kind of dependent on their level of pleasantry and attractiveness, I think, ooh, we're, yeah. we're, made, we're setting a bar that people think this is real. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think that's why I'm, I love kind of exaggerated characters. One, I think. I love those women. I love the woman in a store that you're like, well, she's got two pounds of makeup on. I'm in love with her. Her <laughs> hair's, I mean, I always think like, she's got no flies on her. Like, I just love that woman that's like doing her own thing. But I, I, I like seeing more complicated, challenging women for sure. I think mm -hmm. we're, we're a step mm -hmm. ahead yeah. and I'll, ta I'll take the step. I just want to keep the charge going. Right. Right. Yeah. Do you think it feels any different? I would have to agree. I think uh, I, what I um, I appreciate is that there is a very robust conversation happening at the moment, and that there are strides being made. I I just did a film this summer, and the boom operator was female, and I'd never seen that. I just never seen it. Isn't that weird? And you, and you and you realize how you pre-programmed you are. Uh, in those moments that I, I never even considered that I'd never seen it, you yeah. know, and 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 that it should be such a such a, a moment, you know. I know, <laughs> I know. So, it's bizarre. Yes, and so I mean, I feel like this conversation is really good that we're having, that it it is sustained, and that we don't congratulate ourselves too much, but we don't berate ourselves yeah. either. It's about keeping, well you know, and, 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 and keeping action. Just keeping, put your money where your mouth is and continue to change and choices. The, exactly. It's like demanding a better choice or like, hey, right. it's a sea of men. Like, let's just, yeah. which I love men. Yeah. Love them. But let's be Here's, aware. Let's mix it up it's and that, be aware. Exactly. It's about the awareness and that it takes everybody to be aware, yeah. you know, that this is, is not just uh, uh, a battle for women, it's uh, the, the one for yeah. men as well, and that they have a very, very pivotal role to play to change those demographics. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I'm excited about this.